if, uh, hopefully it's on. Um, yeah, so America's preferred home warranty. Uh, they, they, they do, I, I heard about four to 5,000 of so awesome right. stuff. But I wanted to actually do a quick conversation uh, with, uh, with a gentleman who I've known since, I think, 2012, 2013. We were 300 agents or so at that time. And he and I met at a um, Realtor.com broker advisory board event. And uh, so he and I got to spend some time. And I, of course, tried to recruit him to EXP or Tract. And uh, uh, that didn't happen, but an amazing, nice guy. He built out a huge social network online in the real estate community. Last year, we tapped him on the shoulder, and he's been actually hosting the Brilliant Thoughts podcast. And here... Uh, this this last week, we just announced that we just brought on Tristan Amuda as our new CMO. However, and this is for this is for success. However, in addition to that, Tristan is also one of the newest EXP agents at EXP. Dude, you made that happen, man. You made that happen. So, what are we gonna do now? You know, we're so so Tristan and I are like we're we're messaging like into the night, into the morning. We've got this, we've got all these chat channels. We're getting ready to blow up success. We're getting ready to blow up the social side of success, and obviously we're going to be blowing up uh, more on social for EXP. I know that uh, one of the things that Tristan's going to be focused on is revamping all of EXP Realty's social outlets. So it's so super agent focused. Yeah. Um, so I mean, look, success is 125 years old, the company. Imagine all of the history we have there that we just have to bring back to life. Imagine all, all those amazing people we've talked to that we can learn from and then bring that to EXP as well. Imagine the attraction, guys. You think 85,000 is huge? <laughs> Tens of millions of get ready. Oh, the success brand. It's huge. So, anyways, that's why I love love this company. Glenn is one of the nicest, most sincere human beings you will ever meet. Right? And his vision is right there where we need it. So thank you, Glenn. I awesome. appreciate that, buddy. Well, Tristan, thank you very much. All right. Now I'm going to introduce to you somebody that I've talked to a few times. One of the nicest guys also. Is that, is that a theme today or what? One of the nicest guys. You know him from his own TV show, so get ready for that. He's also CEO of a great company. He's also an investor. He flips homes. You getting, you getting closer? Anybody can guess? Can anybody guess? Do I even have to, do I even have to announce him? All right, everybody. Welcome Tarek Al Musa. Here we go. Watch this. This is one of the biggest HGTV shows below. You know our next guest as a house flipping master. He's back for the eighth season of HGTV's hit series Flip or Flop, Tarek El Musa. I want to be in front of as many cameras as I can, be in front of as many microphones as I can, speak on as many stages as I can, so I can scream to the world and let every single person know that anything is possible, and they are no different than a house. You can completely transform who you are and figure out who you want to be. What's up, EXP Con 22? How's everybody doing today? I can hear you. Oh my God, there's so many people in this room. I thought I signed up to talk to 200. All right, guys, I just want to say, I am so, so, so excited to be standing on the stage and talking to you guys right now, because let me explain something. The Tarek El Musa you guys know today, the guy with those TV shows, the guy with that wife that's way out of his league. It all started sitting in a seminar just like this. And one of the themes of this entire conference is anything is possible. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a story and prove to you that anything is possible. Because myself, I grew up with no money in Buena Park, California. And today, I've accomplished some pretty cool things. 
and I feel like I'm just getting started. So I'm now 41 years old, but I actually got into real estate at the age of 20. And at the time, I was selling Cutco kitchen knives. Anybody have Cutco in your house? Now the real question is, did I sell any of you a knife? There's got to be one of you. And here's what happened. Well, young dumb Tarek lost his sales book, put himself out of business. So one day, I'm living in Cerritos, California. I'm at a Washington Mutual ATM. I'm looking at my, my ATM count balance, and I'm thinking to myself, man, what am I going to do? Has anyone been there? So here's what I did. I said, oh, man, I threw my head up to the right. And it was a sign from God. There was a crooked sign. That sign said, wise old owl, real estate school. And I had a defining moment. And a defining moment is a moment in your life that changes the trajectory of your life. And for many of you, this moment right now is your defining moment. So I thought to myself, you know, if I could sell these knives, well, I could probably sell these houses. So of course, I emptied out my account, signed up for real estate. And you know what happened? Everybody told me what an idiot I was. <laughs> I told everybody, I'm leaving, I want to leave school, I'm going to be a real estate agent. Every single person told me I was going to fail. Everybody told me it was a bad idea. Everybody told me I was too young. Everybody told me it was impossible. But guess what? What's our theme? Anything is possible. Yeah. So, so I get into real estate, and it's right when I get my real estate license, I'll never forget, it was right out of high school, I'm walking through a Ralph's grocery store. And one of my friend's parents walks up to me. And he goes, hey, Tark, what are you up to nowadays? And I'm like, I'm so excited. You guys, all the real estate people, you know, we get excited. And I said, I'm getting into real estate. He looks at me, and he starts laughing. <laughs> and then he goes, what? You think you're going to make six figures? I said, no. Going to make seven. Yeah, and I did. So. In real estate, I always tell people, you can make money fast. People always say, it takes time, it takes years. No, you can make money fast. And I'm going to tell you right now how I did it, and I'm going to tell you how you can do it too. So my first six months in the business, Young Tark sold my high school truck, bought a baby blue Buick Park Avenue off, off this guy I knew. I had the old school phone in the middle, so I was like all realtor, right? I had the magnets on the side, like the whole thing. And I was 20. All my friends in high school would just make fun of me. Like, ever like, you've traded in your lifted truck for a Buick? I said, yeah, of course. So six months in the business, I'm holding open houses. I'm doing floor time, which back then, all the magazines were out, and then people would call. Nobody ever called. So I sat there for months and months and months, failing. I made no money, I got no deals, I was working with buyers, they never bought a house, if they did, it wasn't with me. <laughs> and then they call me, hey Tark, actually we just bought a house. I'm like, but I've been showing you houses for six months. So this is what happened. Right when I was gonna quit real estate, 20 years old, I was like, man, I'm gonna have to go back to school. I hate school. <laughs> but I was still going. and. Um, Man, those are tough times. But one day, there was these two ladies in my office. I worked at a very old Coldwell Banker uh, building that used to be a medical office. And these two ladies were talking about how stupid <laughs> real estate agents were for paying for the coaching from this guy named Mike Ferry. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I was 20, so I didn't even know you can get coaching. I only do a football coach, baseball coach, hockey coach. I'm like, you get a real estate coach? So when these, I hear these two people talking negative about it, what do you guys think I did? I said, well, shit, I might need a coach. <laughs> so, so then I end up going to this free event. It was at a Buena Park, uh, Buena Park Athletic Club. It was called Sequoia Athletic Club. I'm, oh, by the way, I'm a Buena Parker. I don't know if you guys know that. Right by Knott's Berry Farm. OK, so Mike Ferry, man, this man changed my life. Like, if there's one thing I can do in my life is touch you, 
the way he touched me. Because by the end of that free event, Mike Ferry convinced me I was unstoppable. He convinced me I could accomplish anything. He convinced me that anything is possible. Yeah. And at the end of that event, I took a yellow piece of paper, ripped it, took a pen. I wrote, hi, Mike. My name is Tarek El Musa. You don't know who I am today, but one day you will. Do you think he knows who I am today? Mike, call me. He still owes me a round of golf, by the way. All right, so here's what happened. I end up signing up for coaching. Okay, it was $1,000 a month. Guys, I just told you my story. I had no money. <laughs> I had a credit card. And at the time, me and my girlfriend had broken up. And I had nowhere to go. <laughs> so I called my mom. I said, Mom, I got to move back home. She goes, you can't. I'm like, well, what do you mean I can't? Well, I just rented out your bedroom. <laughs> and I'm like, man, how about the garage? She's like, you want to sleep in the garage? I'm like, yeah, I'll sleep in the garage. I just need a bed. I can go into the house and use the shower, right? So she's like, fine. So literally, I get, I get to my mom's house. I hit the clicker. The garage door opens. I roll the bed in. I got off Craigslist. And that's where I lived, right next to my dirt bike and my jet ski. So <laughs> the reason I'm painting this picture, guys, I'm 20, I'm homeless, I'm broke, and I still gambled on myself. Put a thousand bucks a month on that card. And here's what I did. I did exactly what my coach told me, times 10. And my goal was simple. I wasn't trying to make money. I wasn't trying to get listings. I wasn't trying to get buyers. I had one goal. My one goal was to talk to at least 50 people a day. Mike Ferry used to say 20. I said 50. And here's what I did. I told young Tarek, you have 90 days to make this happen with real estate, or you're going back to school. Do you think I wanted to go back to school? Did not want to go back to school. So I worked 12 to 14 hour days, six days a week. And here's what happened. And this was all on expired listings and for sale by owners. I went from no money my entire life, 20-year-old kid, to literally months later, within 90 days, I ended up earning $120,000 selling houses. I mean, with inflation, that's like 47 million today. <laughs> Maybe even more. So my life changed fast. So if you're in this room right now thinking, man, this is going to take me years, it's not. You can make money fast in this business if you put in the work. That's, right, baby. That's it. I changed my life literally, literally overnight. And it all came from calling. And guess who was the worst cold caller on the planet? I remember reading the scripts. If you sold this home, where would you go next? Like the whole thing. You know, and listen, people would cuss me out on the phone. I'd be like, woo, contact, contact. <laughs> I get to go home after 50. I wanted to go home. So I started selling all these expired listings for sale by owners. And I was like, man, I'm the smartest guy alive, of course. When you're that age, you just think you're so smart. So then I, I built a team, which definitely did not work out the way I wanted it to. But I learned so many lessons. And here's the cool part. I was living in my mom's garage. In less than six months later, I had moved into a million dollar house at 21 years old. And then this is where the story gets interesting. By 25, I had to sell my million dollar house and my cars and my watch and honestly my shoes. That's why I wear so many flip flops. So I lost everything or I had to sell everything in the Great Recession. So I've had some hard times in my life, right? So I started with nothing, found success young. By 26, 25, I had literally lost everything I built. I thought my life was over. But I never quit real estate. I kept going. And then it was, 2000, I believe it was 2010. 
I had this crazy idea to flip houses. So just like when I was the young real estate agent, I was like, okay, I want to flip houses. And I came up with the ideas because I saw all these people starting to make money. So of course, I went to every single person I knew. And I got the same nonsense I got last time. You're too young, it's too risky, you got no money, it's too speculative, blah, 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 blah. And guess, guess what? You know how many of those people I was asking for advice were actually real estate investors? Zero. <laughs> so make sure you take your advice from the right people. Amen. Yes. Very, very important. Okay? So everybody said no. And of course, when someone tells me I can't do something, it pisses me off. Amen. Ask my wife. But I do whatever she says, trust me. I didn't get, I didn't get her on looks, okay? I'm a well-behaved husband. Hi, honey. If you're watching this, I love you. Okay, so a crazy idea to flip house. I finally found someone dumb enough to give me money. His name was Pete DeBest, who was, guess what? He was already a multimillionaire. So then I realized I just needed to ask the person that had money instead of everybody else. So then he gave me money for this flip. We go to the Santa Ana Courthouse. We buy it for 115000 Around that same time, I was at a, a real estate convention in Las Vegas, just like this, with 5,000 people in the room, okay? I was sitting in the very, very, very back, because that's where I used to sit. I didn't want to be noticed. My friend was in the very front row. He was the vice president of a real estate company. His manager and the manager's wife left, and they said, hey, I got two seats in the front row. You want to come? I said, heck yeah, I want to come, let's do this. So I'm sitting in the very front row, and here's the interesting part. The night before, Mike Ferry told us, I'm actually telling all of this to you right now, it's my turn to give it to you. He told us to go out, buy clothing you can't afford. He told us to go eat a dinner we can't afford. He told us to order wine we would never order because it was too expensive. And that, to this day, was one of the most memorable moments of my life. Because for one night, I got to live the next level. Thank you. All right, so back to the story. So then I'm sitting in the front row, and I break. I'm, we're looking sharp. I'm in a Xenia suit. I didn't even know what Xenia was before the night before, right? So at the break, everybody's coming up. And in the front row, we usually have the VIPs, the people that do a lot of business. And one of the gentlemen I was talking to starts talking to me about how he built his brand. And I was like, well, tell me more. And he told me he had a local TV show in Palm Springs, California. I'm like, local TV, what are you doing? He's like, well, I'm sh showcasing listings. I'm like, all right, well, what does that do? I mean. He's like, well, people recognize me. I'm like, okay, well, that's cool, but like, what does that do? He goes, well, well, they recognize me, and then they work with me. And then I was like, genius, genius. So then, we, I, then I leave Las Vegas, and I get home. I lived in San Clemente, California at the time. Um, I was married to my Flipper Flop co-star, uh, Christina Hawk, at the time. And we were sitting in the living room, and I'm talking to her. I'm like, Christina, it's like, we got to get a TV show. <laughs> What's the theme? Anything's possible, right? I'll never forget. She had one, one leg up the stairs. She looks at me, laughs at me, in a nice way, of course, shakes her head, says you're crazy, and says I'm going to bed. You want to know what I did? The genius thing I did, everybody wonders, like, oh, how did he do it? I got on Google. <laughs> I typed Hollywood production companies. <laughs> Take action. The key to my success is non-stop action. Don't wait. Don't talk. Just do it. And if you suck, who cares? Because the more you do it, the better you get. The better you get, the more success you find. Thank you. Thank you. So long story short, I sent our pictures to all these different production companies, who we are, what we did. I woke up the next morning and a company wrote me back. They're like, hey, we like your stuff. Send a home video. Oh, here's the part I missed. I said, I'm going to get a TV show. She goes, a TV show about what? I'm like, well, that's a good point. <laughs> and I was like, well, we just bought a house to flip. She goes, yeah? Well, what if we flip houses on TV? And that was the birth of Flipper Flop. 
in that exact moment. So I just went for it. I took action. I sent the home video. I did everything wrong in this video. Of course, they loved it. I electrocuted myself. Ouch. <laughs> I painted all the baseboards onto the brand new wood flooring. Not really smart. Oh, and then I burned my feet with acid. That is not fun. If any of you have ever done that, it wasn't my fault, by the way. I followed the instructions. It said to wear gloves. It didn't say anything about shoes. <laughs> I was acid washing a shower. Of course, I took my flip-flops off. I'm like, hey, why are my feet burning? <laughs> Man, if I had more time, I could be up, for, up here for hours telling you guys the funniest stories. I mean, I used to hang signs on freeways. One time they just redid the asphalt. I tripped. There was a ditch on the other side. I came back with mud on my face, twigs in my hair, my ear. Christina goes, what are you doing? I was like, just putting up signs. I'm bleeding. <laughs> All right. So then we get the, the home video. They loved it. We did the pilot. It went off to all the networks. Nobody wanted it. I said, like, well, I tried. Ten months later, I get a call. And their production company goes, you're not going you to believe this. HGTV wants to do a pilot of a house flipping show. I'm like, heck, yeah. This is an exciting moment. So then we shoot the pilot. And then they tell us, well, it might take you know, one to three years before we get a series if we ever get one, because the odds are low. Anything's possible. So then, two weeks after we deliver the pilot, I get a contract from a network for a worldwide TV show to flip 13 houses in 10 months. It's exciting, right? There were two problems. Anybody know what those problems were? I had no money, and I didn't know how to flip houses. <laughs> this is true. You guys, I pitched getting a house flipping TV show before I ever flipped a house. Think about that. that that's crazy. So then I'm like, OK, well, how, how am I going to do 13 houses? So then I call my lawyer, my buddy Roger. I'm like, Roger, like, dude, what, I mean, if I sign this thing, what's the worst that can happen? He goes, well. They could sue you. I'm like, oh. So I'm sitting in my apartment. I looked at my finance couch. I looked at my, my finance coffee table. I was like, man, they could have it. So I'm like, I'm, I'm signing this thing. I, I'm pretty sure I signed it twice. I was so excited. And here's what I did. The same way that I found success cold calling expired listings, I found success as a house flipper. I was tenacious. I did one thing all day, every day. And I was working up to 18 hours a day. I used to leave my house after working all day. I'd come home, eat dinner at 8.30, 9 o'clock. I would map out between 9 and 10. And then every night between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. by myself, I would drive the neighborhoods of Southern California looking at the houses that were going to the auction the next day. And the reason I did that is because I had to buy vacant houses because we had to film a TV show. I put in the work. But guess what happened? Because I took so much massive action, man, you just get the results whether you want them or not. Like, that's it. Action creates opportunity. If you're not taking action, there's no opportunity. So I'm almost out of time up here. Like I said, I could be up here for hours. Long story short, we came on the air. The network. We're gonna, they, were gonna, they thought they were going to burn us off the air because one of the executives didn't think the show was good for the network. They aired us from 11 p.m. until 12 a.m. Something special happened. The next day, the ratings came out, and we had broken every record for HGTV in that time slot. And then we became the number one watched house flipping show in history, Flip or Flop. So I just want to give you guys a little bit of inspiration today. And I'm telling you, I was in your seat for years. You need to make the decision now. We're not getting any younger. This is the youngest we will ever be. We just got older, by the way. And before I get out, I'm going to say one last thing. 
ran flipper flop for 10 seasons, two-time cancer survivor. I filmed through the entire thing. If, thank you, thank you. If you watch, if you watch the show, I'm like an accordion. I'm like, I gained 60 pounds. I lost 50 pounds. I gained 60 pounds. But I never gave up. When I got my cancers, the network called me. They're like, it's okay. We understand the, the show's over. I said, what's over? You're going to film me rolling into that surgery. And then a lot of you know my story. I've had some ups and downs. But I'll tell you, meeting my wife, Heather El Musa, absolutely changed my life. She taught me to love again. She gave me hope again. She gave me dreams again. And man, so much of today's success is because of the energy she puts into me. Because I love that woman more than anything. I love my kids more than anything. And I got a newborn on the way. So with all of that being said, guys, just do it and do it for you. That's it.